about one of my favorite features in Lightroom, and that is working with geotagged images in the map module. Now, geotagged images are images where the location data is written into the file. He said, well, all right, so you can display that on a map. So what? Well, I'm going to take a few moments and show you exactly what, because it is more than just displaying your photos on a map. Now, I've recently released as part of our Lightroom series a episode dealing entirely with the map module, digging deeper than I have seen anybody else teach ever before on this, these features. But I'll take a few moments now and just give you a, an overview of some of the ways to get your images tagged and then some of what you can do with your images. But if you're interested, please check out our series. Each episode is just two. 50. That's two dollars and fifty cents. It is a, for a limited time. Uh, just a few more weeks now, and about mid-April, they're all going to be released, and the price is going to go up. So take advantage of that. The feedback we've been getting on those is uh, fantastic, and I'm, I'm really proud of the work we're doing. You're looking at a map with some of my images that have been tagged over the last about year and a half. This catalog is holding maybe close to two years worth of images. And, you know, we are really just kind of drowning in digital data these days. And anything that we can do that can help us stay organized and find what we're looking for quickly and efficiently, I think is worth doing. Uh, and, and just like tagging and keywording, and using collections or using folders to stay organized, adding location data into your images is another way to help you find what you're looking for. Let's take a closer look right now though and just look at this overview map. Uh, we've got this little key right over here and I can zoom in uh, to a group of photos or a cluster of photos to use their terminology. And you can see that as I get closer, they split and become a little bit more granular. And some of the clusters now have the little pointer at the bottom which represents a group of photos at the same location. So nearby photos in that general area versus same location within just a few feet of each other. That's nifty. How do we get our images to have geolocation data in them or location data in there? Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to go back to my library for a second and work with a group of images that was taken on the McKay Photography Academy trip in Montana. So right here we got Virginia City. So we visited a place called Virginia City, Montana, and uh, I took a bunch of pictures in there. And you can see, I took a bunch of pictures of Sweeney, the bus driver, who was a real character, great guy. And Christina took a couple pictures of me, and I took a picture of my ice cream because it was delicious. I want to tag these images. Now, at the time, I could have been running an app on my phone that was recording where I was at that time. And then you come back to Lightroom and you can take that track that you recorded and feed it these images and it will say you took an image at 2.05 p.m. Let me look at the track. Oh, on the track at 2.05 p.m. you are at X and Y coordinates or latitude and longitude and it knows how to sync that up. It's pretty handy. But what if you weren't running a track? And in that other Lightroom video I show you it I'll walk you through the recommended apps uh, and how exactly to get that in here to Lightroom. But let's say you weren't for whatever reason. And uh, you, you can manually tag using Lightroom. I'm going to go and type in the search box. And you do have to be online in Lightroom for the map module to work. It's really the only module that needs to be connected online for it to, to work. I'm going to type in Virginia City. MT for Montana, the state. And it finds it. Uh, the search in here is built off of the Google Maps search. It actually just goes out and uses the Google Maps. It's quite good. Uh, I've rarely stumped it uh, when I'm searching for normal places. And you can use addresses. You don't have to know the whole town. Uh, if you knew an, a specific address, you could feed it that. And, and many landmarks are in here as well. So here we are. Uh, I'm on the map style hybrid right now, which is the satellite imagery with road information overlaid. You can see that we can turn satellite and we, the road names basically disappear. That's the only difference. We have just the plain old road map and you have a light and dark version of that. And you have the terrain, which gives you kind of a topographic look or a shaded relief look as well. I prefer the uh, satellite view personally. 
Now, in a case like this, I don't care about being incredibly precise, but it's pretty impressive how clear and clean the satellite imagery is. Uh, and looking around, this was the parking lot we parked in. And then I remember we walked across the street and I believe it's this place right here was the ice cream shop. So I can come over here to those little ice cream pictures. Let me bring this a little larger so you can see there. Uh, these four pictures were all taken in the ice cream shop. I can drag them and drop them on the ice cream shop. Now that took a second longer than it usually does. It's usually instantaneous, but there it is. Four images are now represented on this map and I hover over them and you can see that it shows little thumbnails of those images and I can scroll through. It gives me a little bit of the metadata as well. Uh, and down here, these images now have an icon added to them that shows their location. And if we scroll away for that from a second and we come back here and we click on one of those, it will pop us back to that section or that, that area that that image was taken. I can remember that I walked down the street a little bit and there was a mailbox right in front of one of these buildings and I can drag and drop those there as well. So again, it really depends on how precise you want to be. In this example, I'm just showing you how precise you can be, but really for the purpose of this town, all of these pictures were taken within two blocks. And so I'm just going to select all of the images in this folder. I'll just scroll through and make sure I'm getting exactly what I expect and no more, no less. Yep, and I'm just going to drag them and drop them basically in the middle of this town. That's precise enough for me. And one of the benefits of doing this is not only being able to find your photos later based on location, but to be able to find your locations later based on photos. A lot of times as photographers, we end up at these beautiful, wonderful areas. We take some pictures, we move on in life. And then later as our skills grow or our experience grows, we realize that we could, we could go back to that scene or that area and make a much better, stronger image. And knowing where that picture was taken exactly can be really helpful in getting yourself back to that point. Maybe you want to go back at a different time of year, make a different type of picture, but at the same place. Now, if we look over here on the right, we've got in white the GPS data. When I drag these images onto the map, it knows from the data embedded in the map, this location, and it writ that, it writ, it wrote that into that little spot. If you look above that though, there is information, Virginia City, Montana, United States, US. It used the internet to say, well, this location is within city boundaries of Montana, the state of the United States and country code. How did it know to go get that or why did it even let it go get that? That's in the Lightroom catalog settings right here. Enable reverse geocoding of GPS coordinates. The first time you set up Lightroom, it asks you if you want to, the first time you set up a catalog, it asks you if you want to enable this. And I say yes, because then, well, we'll see in a second why. You can also have it export reverse geocoding suggestions whenever the address fields are empty. So it will fill this in on export if for some reason it didn't have it. And that's up to you whether or not you want that information shared out and it depends on where you're sharing it out. So I've written all of that information in here and I can zoom out and there are the 140 pictures right there in Virginia City. Uh, and notice that the other numbers on the map are gone right now because I'm in this collection of Virginia City and I could go back to all photographs and then we're going to see the other ones pop up on the map here in a second as it loads those markers. So what can we do with this information? I've been teasing that. Well, we can come over here to collections and create a collection, but before we do that, Let's go back to the library and these library filter tools that I love. We can go to metadata and we've got, we can search by date. So you can say, oh, I remember that was June 1st or June 2nd. Oh gosh, I can't remember when we were going down that beautiful road in New Hampshire. But you can change this from date to location, including city, state, province, country. So let's go to, um, well, let's go to state. And then here is a list of all of the states I've taken pictures in. And we can pull up Montana. And then it's going to filter and show me all of the pictures I took in Montana, including somewhere in here, probably towards the end. Yep, there they are, the Virginia City photos. 
all in there. Now you might be, you might look up here at the top and say, really, were you taking pictures of tigers in Montana? I was. This was part of this Animals of Montana uh, trip with McKay Photography Academy that was fantastic and let us get amazingly close to wild and not so wild animals, some native to Montana, some not so native to Montana. All right, so this gives you a powerful way to search but let's say you didn't want to just say Montana. Maybe you went on a trip through New England and you wanted to um, broaden your search beyond just boundaries. Well, you can come over to locations here. You could, of course, say, show. you could create a collection that said, show me every picture of Montana. Sorry, we're talking about New England. Show me every picture of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut. Actually, let's start an argument. Should New York be included as part of New England? Okay. That, that discussion aside, you could include all of those states in one smart collection. We can come here and say create a smart collection and it's got to match all of the following. So we could go down here to, where is it, location and say state province is Vermont and hit the plus and state province is New Hampshire and let's call it V, T, and H. Those are the abbreviations for those two states, for those who live outside. And match any of the following rules. Not all, because I can't have a picture that's in both Vermont and New Hampshire. So now we're going to save it, and boom, there we go. I've got 1,826 pictures that I've taken in Vermont or New Hampshire. But my point here was that you are not limited to these collections where you have to list out the states. In the map module, you have the snazzy little locations. And you can come in here and it gives you these nice little radius rings that you can drag and move around. So let's call this Southern VT and NH. Um, and I'm going to leave it in my folder's locations, but I could create a new folder and really subdivide the whole country or the whole world up into different locations. What do I want its radius to be? Yeah, about 140 miles. We'll come back to the private in a second. Create. And I can then drag this and drop this. That's much bigger than it needs to be. Let's go. There we go. We're getting some of Massachusetts as well. So I've just created this boundary. The, that extends beyond any political boundaries that humans have made. 609 photos in that region. And I can click on it and it will take me, of course, into that region and I can see exactly where those pictures are and zoom in and start to digest individual ones as well. Notice, or as I said, we'll come back to, and this is the last thing I'm going to show, is location options. You can make an area private. What does that mean to make it private? It means when you export these photos, no matter what your metadata location setting is on, it will make sure that location information is stripped out. Maybe you've got one of those cameras that automatically is tagging your photos. It's got a little GPS in it. You do not want to share every picture you take inside your house with the world with location data attached. So by making an area around your house, hovering over your house that is private, anytime you export those photos, and that's the only way to get photos out of Lightroom, it will strip the, meta, the location metadata from them, thus saving you from showing everybody in the world exactly where your house is, if you feel like that's a terrible thing. So this was just a glimpse of, this is actually a fairly detailed glimpse of working with location tagged photos, geotagged photos as they say, in the map module of Lightroom. When you export these out, you can put them up on places like Flickr, which will then nicely display them on a map for you, and several other sites will do that as well. And that's neat, but I think the real power here is adding this in as an extra tool for you to be able to find photos you're looking for based on their location. I hope you appreciated this video. If you did and you're not already a subscriber, take a moment and hit that subscribe button. And if you liked this glimpse, you come on over to photorec.tv slash shop and pick up some of our episodes or the whole package. It's affordable and it is excellent. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.